line up with the, the answers. Okay, 2018 paper, this is your big long one, uh, restricted under one. Okay, first thing says read through the supplementary sheet and I've had to kind of split it up in different bits so hopefully it'll line up with the, the answers, so bear with me. First bit of it says, the diffusion of glucose across the plasma membrane of mammalian cells is facilitated by a family of related proteins called the glute receptors. Glute receptors have, sorry, transporters, not receptors, have a specific binding site for glucose which alternately faces inside and outside the cell. The orientation of the binding site is brought about by a change in conformation as shown in figure one. So let's face it, that's generally what we're looking at for anything to do with proteins. We need a conformational change. So our glucose attaches to the transporter and when it does that, you've then got a shift so it can then be pushed into the intracellular. Several studies have measured the changes in rates of glucose uptake by glute transporters as a result of concentration of glucose increasing. Results of four different glute transporters are shown in figure two. For each type of glute transporter, the rate of transport levels off at a maximum value that is termed Vmax. The glucose concentration at which the rate of transport is half Vmax is determined as the Km of the transporter. Km values for four types of glute are shown in figure two. Now you might have looked at this in higher when you were looking at the effect of um, your different inhibitors. You might not have talked about it a lot, um, but it should be kind of maybe getting in there a little bit. But they're not going to ask you to use that knowledge, they're going to ask you to apply some thinking to it. But if you already know it, you're good. Right, figure two, we've got glucose uptake in millimoles per litre per minute. Sorry, millimolar per litre per minute. And along the bottom, we've got millimoles per litre of glucose concentration. So as we're increasing glucose concentration on the bottom, you've got an increase in uptake. And we can see it looks like a standard kind of limiting factors curve. There's something becoming an issue at the top end. And you've got your different glute receptors. And I'm going to spin down because I moved this one down a little bit. Studies have suggested that the caffeine, chemical caffeine is an inhibitor of glucose transport by glute 1. Figure 3 shows data obtained from a recent study of the effects of increasing caffeine concentration on the uptake of glucose by glute 1. The uptake of glucose in these experiments was measured per litre of intracellular fluid. So we've got caffeine in millimoles per litre, and then we've got the glucose uptake in micromoles per litre per minute, and a little clear trend affected by that. Okay, right, back up to question 1A. Explain why the rate of uptake by glute receptors, I keep on saying receptors, sorry, transporters, levels off at a high glucose concentration. Well, basically something else is the issue here. You're increasing glucose, but it's not speeding up the transporters. Basically, all the transporters must be filled. At this point, all transporters are active. So increasing glucose does not increase rate. It's all you can see, really. Okay. Refer to figure two in supplementary sheet. So that's just, if I can get this to line up a little bit, there we go. Um, figure two shows GLUT3 has the lowest Km. Explain how this supports the conclusion that GLUT3 has the highest affinity for glucose. Right, so if you know this already, you're great. If you're not, you're gonna have to read this section up here. The glucose concentration at which the rate of transport is half Vmax is defined as Km of the transporter. Okay, so what we're saying is, that's telling you how fast you manage to get half of the maximum speed. So the smaller that number is, the quicker you're managing to get to half of the maximum. And that's basically what you have to, to recognise. So we've got here, if I just bring up our GLUT3, where's our GLUT3? You look at GLUT3 here, it's got the steepest curve. Okay, so what's happening is we are very quickly getting to half its maximum. So therefore it is very quickly picking up the glucose. Okay, so yeah, that's that's what we're looking for. So explain how it supports it has the highest affinity. Um, it has the fastest increase in activity. You could say at low levels of glucose. Okay, but that's what we're looking for you to recognise. Okay, in C. So we try and keep that still lined up. The rate of glucose transport at given glucose concentration can be calculated using this formula. So you've got Vmax times the concentration of glucose divided by Km plus the concentration of the glucose. 
GLUT2 transporters found mainly in liver and pancreatic cells have a KM of 17 millimol per litre. At this concentration of glucose, the rate of transport by GLUT2 is 0 0.02 millimoles per litre. Sorry, per minute. Per litre per minute. Not per litre. Millimoles per minute. The physiological range of glucose concentration in a healthy individual after fasting ranges from approximately 3.9 to 5.5 millimoles per litre. Okay. Calculate the rate of glucose transport by GLUT2 when the blood glucose concentration is 5.5 millimoles per litre. Right, I'm going to move it down a little bit. I really didn't like this question when I was reading it, but I think it's, you know, it's properly problem solving. Right, so what we know is that your GLUT2 has a KM of 0 0.02 millimoles per minute at 17 millimoles per litre. Okay. Right, if we look at the graph, you could get totally confused here because if I look at the graph, let me just bring the highlighter in again, GLUT2, this one here, here's your GLUT2, and you'll notice this has not actually finished its levelling off curve. So I can't read my Vmax off that graph. So instead, I have to use the fact that Km, Km is half Vmax. So what that means is, so our Km we've got at 17, yeah, our rate at Km, we're told is 0 0.02, so that means our maximum velocity is 0 0.04. Now, you had to do a lot of work to get that far. Um, I thought it was not lovely. So that means if I substitute this into the equation, what I'm saying is it's 0 0.04, because that's what my Vmax is, multiplied by my glucose concentration, which is 5.5, divided by Km, now that's the, the 17, um, plus my 5.5. Plug all that in and you get 0 0.0098 or your calculator might give it or you might want to give it in scientific notation as 9.8 times 10 to the minus 3. I thought that was a sneaky question. Uh, you had to really read it very carefully. Okay. Increases in blood glucose concentration lead to increased insulin production by the pancreas. Glucose uptake by GLUT2 is important for this response because as glucose entry via GLUT2 increases, the pancreas synthesizes more insulin. Suggest why the high Km of GLUT2 is important in this mechanism for sensing glucose concentration. Okay, so if you have a high Km, that means you've got a lower sensitivity in terms of the receptor. And you kind of need that because you don't want your blood glucose concentration as soon as there's any glucose in your blood to straight away produce more insulin because that would then take it out your blood. So what you need is there to be a level that the glucose can get to before it triggers the uptake and the increase of insulin, okay, or a high uptake rather. So what we're going to get is that you only get um, insulin production when you have a high glucose concentration in the blood, which is what you want. Okay, I'm not even going to write something in there, that's what you're needing to say. Okay, for D, release of insulin into the bloodstream leads to a rapid increase in the transport of glucose into muscle and fat cells via GLUT4. Explain why this normal response to insulin does not happen in individuals with type 2. Okay, so you need to know just the, dif the differences in here. Okay, they've got no information in the tables or the definitions, you just need to know it. So what you're expected to know is that with type 2, it is the receptor reception, okay, so the receptor sensitivity is lower. Okay, so they are not responding to, to the signal basically, and what that means is that you're not recruiting your GLUT4 to your membrane. And you need both of those points. Okay? Right, referring to figure 3, describe the trend shown in, in that. Okay? That's a bit of a gift. Okay? Because we've got a nice little graph there. Trend means I need to remember you've got to always put the two things in. So I'm going to say as the caffeine increases in, sorry, 
Yes, as the caffeine increases in concentration, our glucose uptake in millimoles per micromoles per litre per minute decreases, and I could even say it sharply decreases and then is tailing off. That's your trend. As the caffeine increases, the glucose uptake decreases. Okay. Um, blood serum caffeine levels in people who regularly consume caffeine are typically around 6 micromole per litre. Using figure 3, predict with justification whether this level of caffeine consumption would be likely to have a large effect on the transport of glucose by GLUT1. Okay, now this, I guess, so there was a couple of sneaky ones in this question. Okay, because if you look here, caffeine is in millimoles per litre. And they are talking about micromoles per litre. So that is 1,000 times less concentrated. So we are not looking on the graph here at 6, which has a drastic impact on glucose uptake. But we're not looking at 6. We're looking at 0 0.006. 0, 6, OK? Um, so it's you look at this and you're like, well, it's tailing off. You know, if this goes for another reduction down on this one, OK? Um, sorry, and this way. Um, yeah, it's just not going to have an impact. Are, are we really looking at something that is about here? No, in fact, well, what, that's one. <laughs> so I'm looking for six thousandths of that. So I can't even put that in the line. OK, so is it going to have an impact? No, it's, it's, it's too small. It's not going to have an impact. Because far too low. Okay, um, yeah, sneaky because micromole and the other one at the top was sneaky as well, I think. Um, so a fairly tricky first question, but that's it done.